Welcome back to another edition of the Edge Podcast. Publisher Brendan Slaughter here for BeaversEdge.com. Joined it with my co-host TJ Mathewson. TJ, welcome back to the Big Pod. We got a lot to talk about this week as Oregon State gets their first win of the season in uh, impressive style, beating Boise State at Reeser Stadium, thirty-four to seventeen. We'll be breaking it all down and also looking ahead uh, to Oregon State's Saturday night matchup against Fresno State down in uh, Fresno, California. But Welcome back to the pod, TJ. Uh, it's been a, a pretty fun week, eh? Yeah, it was a good one. It's, uh, like you said, always better to talk about the win. The uh, The moods are a lot better. I mean, it's easier to to cover and talk to a team that wins so big and, you know, has some expectations coming into the season. And then, you know, against a team that you could easily see them losing to at home in a home opener in a half-built stadium, you can, you know, you jump out 24 nothing, you force five turnover, and it's like, oh, yeah. Hype, hype, hype could actually be real. What, what a concept. But I'll, I will say the, the Beavers, they surprised me. I did not think they would look that good in game one. But they did. They, they, they especially that defense. I, 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 we will probably get into it. But, you know, we're, we're there at camp, right? And defense usually dominates during mm-hmm. camp. I'm like, yeah, well, they'll f- play, face another team. They might give up some chunk plays here and there. And might have some times they look good. Might right. have some times they look bad. And. I mean, the only time they looked bad on Saturday was when they were chasing Taylor Green around, probably because they didn't prep for him at all. Yeah. And they're like, okay, who's this six five guy who runs a 4-4 four, four, right. standing there in the backfield? Oh, man, now I have to chase him all the way across the field now or we're getting ready for Hank Bachmeyer. Yeah. Uh, so that was, like, really it. Otherwise, I mean, besides penalties, man, oh, man, they looked good. Yeah, I mean, for Oregon State to look that good right out the shoot, TJ, I think has is, is got to make every Oregon State fan just giddy, you know, because it's been, you know, t- you know, you, you, it's been a while. I mean, A, you, you go back to 2015 since they won their, um, you know, their opener, but even that was against Weber State. You'd have to probably go back to like 2012 when they opened and beat Wisconsin at Research Stadium right out the gate to have – uh, a comparable like hey this is not a an fcs type win uh to open the season so i think that's particularly impressive and um the defensive effort that you talked about uh, we'll obviously be breaking down the game but we heard all full camp long about you know the defense under trent bray the defense under trent bray and tj you're smiling because you know it was like the common theme for like three weeks and uh the, the early returns were fantastic obviously uh you know, the third quarter, there were some lapses, but there were some lapses on offense, too. Could be some first-game jitters still. Um, and I would put the um, – uh, coming into the game, TJ, the odds of, like, if you're Trent Bray, like, talking to your guys, the odds of Talon Green coming into that game were probably, what, 3%? So oh, if that, I would game? like a, you're, you're replacing a four-year starter. Yeah. After, I think, like, what, four drives? Yeah, I, don't so, know, I mean, he didn't make it to the half, did he? Mm, did he make it to the half? I think it was, no. or was it exactly half? He didn't. I yeah, no, I think it was in the second quarter, if I believe. Yeah, I that's like yeah, that, we weren't going to think of that. Yeah, I mean, there's and, no way. And for comparison's sake, you know, I had you know just for people who you know maybe chimed in and said, oh, you know, Hank Bachmeyer wasn't as great as maybe we talked him up to be on the last podcast. He had a really good year last year. It would be kind of similarly if Oregon State, you know, uh, shuts down Jake Hayner uh, this weekend, as we'll get into later on the podcast. But <laughs> they get Jake Hayner benched, which would that would be, uh, yeah. Be something. But I don't, so, I don't think that'll happen. But but no, I mean, I think just the combination of of uh, pressure, you know, collapsing that pocket, and you know, I, I credit Rajon Wright, Jaden Grant, uh, you know, for just kind of not only the interceptions, but some key pass deflections early yeah. on there, TJ. Yeah. And they had really their just, hands on a lot. Yeah, and just ma- and to me, it just looked like they frustrated Hank Bachmeyer in every way. Did you kind of see that same thing? And if they can do that and keep that up this next weekend, we'll get into it later. Uh, I-, I think they're going to be in great shape. Yeah, and most of the offense for Boise was all, like pretty much just Taylor Green's legs, which when right. you have a really good running quarterback, it's pretty hard to defend, no, no matter right. what level of football you're at. But – Everything that was in structure, Oregon State, unless they were, you know, there was a couple of really dumb pass interference penalties where sure. the Beavers were in excellent coverage, <laughs> like just perfect coverage. And yeah. for some reason, I think Rajon Wright had a bad one. I can't remember if he had two or not, but yeah. he, he would just turn around and he'd grab the receiver. It's like, dude, there's like two of you there. I don't really think you need to do that. But again, that's just all part of these, how aggressive these DBs have been playing. And, you know, we're out talking, uh, talking to players today. It was, uh, 
uh, James Rawls, James Rawls today on the uh, defensive line and Katana Oladapo too. They didn't really have too much to say, as you'll see on beaversedge.com. Uh, go check out the YouTube for uh, all that exclusive content. Big shout out to the Oregon State Band for playing behind us for the second straight day. Really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> it makes for really good audio. Um, but they, they were just like uh, the the main thing we we kind of we kind of take away from this, I guess, from today was you know we, we heard all this uh, you know Trent Bray this Trent Bray that during during fall camp and it kind of like windled down to what something Nick Dashel of of the Oregonian asked, um, asked these guys about it's just like about just how simplistic it is and how it just yeah. allows guys to stop thinking and just go do it. And I think that's a lot of what we saw. It's like, Hey, instead of thinking this, go sack Hank Bachmeyer, go sack Taylor green. I think they had three sacks, yeah. which is a pretty good number for, <laughs> for Oregon State's defensive line. They had 16 last year total, right? right? That's off to a good start. And I think six more pressures on top of that, right. allowing the defensive backs just, you know, wall off those receivers which they did a phenomenal job of there was not many open passes beyond five yards which is something you want to do and they're uh, another thing I think we took away is um they're rotating linebackers a lot which kept guys fresh and Trent right. mentioned it's like hey it's important we could take two games worth of snaps off of Omar Spates and have him as fresh as possible for game number 12 against the Oregon Ducks so right. that's that would be important too and the fact that you're able to showcase that all, all of these things against a quality opponent, a team that's projected for 10 wins and to win, you know, you could argue the sixth or seventh best conference in college football, depending on the year. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 you know, you hit some great points there and it's, it's not a win that can be, you know, explained away. And I think that's why, you know, you saw Oregon state TJ, get significant into receiving votes this week in the AP top 25 poll is, you know, the fact that this wasn't a cupcake of cup, cupcake of a team. This was a solid Boise team. And where I think that if, you know, with Fresno state also receiving some votes, if Oregon state is able to get that win uh, this weekend, TJ, I think they could be in even, you know, greater shape to earn their first ranking since 2013. And, you know, going back to what you mentioned uh, with Trent Bray, I mean, can, do you think they can like, back that bus over Tim Tibisar anymore passive aggressive. I don't think so. Or is it, I mean, my goodness. It, so it, I, don't, it is. <laughs> I don't think I ever noticed that really until I think you pointed it out. Yeah. Um, yeah I, just like, Hey, just like listen to what the defensive players say yeah. when they're, when they talk about the old defense versus yeah. the new defense. And then I finally picked up on them. Like, Oh yeah. It's like, it seems like every yeah. single player, um yeah. every single player who uh who mentions it said that N nothing against tim tibisar of course he was really great to us uh media wise right, us some fantastic quotes and such but and just in terms of defensive scheme i could absolutely and it really yeah. paid its dividends like a full off season of install of hey this is trent bray's defense not like you know trent bray's flavor on tim tibisar's defense like we saw right. last year no 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 this is a fully installed trent bray defense and it looked very good well, and, you know, like you said, uh, obviously a, a credit to Tim, who was, you know, he was great with the media, but, you know, I think it's very telling that he's running the defense in Akron now, I guess, compared to, you know, a power five school out West. So I think, you know, his, you know, defensive prowess maybe is, is appropriated where it is right now. And that's where I think that, you know, he had a chance to, you know, build this defense up and for whatever reason, it didn't perform, you know, that that's just how, it, you know, how the, how the cookie crumbles, as they say. And that's where I, I give Trent Bray a ton of credit for kind of turning, um, you know, lemons into lemonade, as far as the fact that, you know, there were some bad defensive outings, you know, you look at what led to his dismissal, those games against Colorado and Cal. And then Trent Bray obviously shows us, you know, some good signs later half of the year. And then, Obviously, uh, Saturday, I think, was, was a huge step in the right direction. Uh, let's pivot real quick and talk uh, about the offense. Um, other than, you know, a few uh, minor lapses here and there, I thought Chance Nolan played a really good game. He had one yep. pretty bad pick, and he admitted yeah, so. It, it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, like he, he admitted so in, in the press conference, laughed about it. It was like, you know, that one, you know, was pretty bad. Got to you know, throw that one into the stands. Not Yeah, <laughs> and, and I'll give him to the credit. sideline. Yeah, and I'll give him credit because he 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 owned it, and I thought for the most part played a really good game. Uh, absolutely hit that deep ball, TJ. That was probably you know just beautiful to your eyes after you saw so many missed deep balls in fall camp, and they link up on some of them. 
uh, obviously not all, but a lot to like about that downfield uh, passing attack. And, you know, I think that offense is only going to get better as the weeks go, specifically mm-hmm. the offensive line. The run game will come around. But for game one, I really like what I saw from the offense. Yeah, I think it was bigger per se that we saw a good passing attack rather than a good running attack. Because we, we like, know the Beavers can run the football, right? They, right. They're arguably five deep in the running back room and have the best offensive line in the conference. So that usually eventually as the course of the season runs out, you can, you know, you'll run for 250, 300 yards against, you know, a weaker run defense, still put up 180. I think they still finished with 170, 180 rushing yards on the day. Uh, mm-hmm. It wasn't like, it wasn't enormous. I think they only averaged a little over four yards per carry. But uh, overall, it was like, it was a fine running game. But that passing attack, that was what we were looking for, that step yeah. forward. Are they going to attack down the field? Or are they going to connect down the field? And they did. I, I yeah. Canzano tweeted out a number he was 19 and a half yards of completion, which is the Ooh. highest in a game for a Beaver offense since 2006. That was pretty Ooh. good. I did roll wow. my eyes a little bit on that first drop because that's what we'd saw, seen a lot in fall camp. Chance back there in the a clean pocket made a perfect throw. He hit Trayshawn Harrison right in his zero. Yeah. And Trayshawn just, boom, just drops it. Mm. Yeah, that's but uh, they cash in later uh, that on that same drive. I believe they cash in on a long touchdown. So, yeah, no, obviously, uh, the, so I'm sure Trayshawn uh, got a little. Uh, I'm sure his teammates gave him a hard time after that. You can you can give your teammate a hard time after that when you win. You know, comfortably like Oregon State did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, unfortunately, though, you know, I I believe there were a couple drops that Trayshawn had in that game. So that's going to be something you know that the. You know, he's going to want to get cleaned up for sure. I thought Luke Musgrave uh, stole yes, the show. Yes, forgot I to mention he, him. Yeah, I thought, you know, for the most part, like, you know, he looked every part, and we wrote about it in our takeaways at beaversedge.com, every part, like the number one, like, go-to safety blanket target that Chance Nolan can have all year. And, you know, no disrespect to the tight ends of the past for Oregon State, but Luke Musgrave is just so adept at being able to run with the ball in his hands. He almost looks yeah. like a – a big receiver out there and you know that that wasn't quite what Tegan Quatoriano was he was a little bit bigger not quite as athletic Luke Musgrave is extremely athletic so I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, if that can continue but I think that's a mismatch that uh, they've got to you know hit and hit hard these next uh, uh, 11 games yeah and they went to him like right away like right yeah. right away they, they make it an emphasis to get him and he has three times as many catches as any other beaver and you know, yeah, you had chance to get his long passes into his wide receivers, but really when he needed stuff in the middle of the field and short, he went to Luke Musgrave and Luke really showed some stuff after the catch too. And, you know, I, my first season covering Oregon state last year, I just heard, Oh, why are they not emphasizing the tight ends? Why are they not emphasizing the tight ends? Well, it seems like they're, they emphasize the tight ends this week. They did. I, I don't know how well Luke did blocking wise. I don't think people really care too much about that. They probably want him to be a fine blocker, yeah. which is probably all he needs to do when he's, you know, gliding down the field and, and beating <laughs> linebackers wide open. And Chance, for his credit, passed over the middle, found him multiple times, was comfortable throwing in that middle part of the field. So it was good to see from Luke Musgrave. One other thing, Brendan. Yeah. The emphasis of Jack Coletto. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> yes. just – Please. It wasn't Give just me some more, situation. Jack. It wasn't just like – situational yard here yard there it was almost a a collective offensive effort to get him the ball not necessarily in space but just to give him some more volume and he paid it off I mean it's almost like you know a really great reporter at Beaver's Edge wrote about him you know (laughs) wearing a jack of all trades jersey like you know two three weeks ago and if you were in on the damn board you might have known what was going on at practice early in the season. TJ had the score. Yeah. No, so we, I mean, we, didn't see, we didn't see him line up doing what we said he was doing. But, no. I mean, regardless, I mean, with the ball, he was, he was, he was good. Yeah, no, it was, it was a lot of fun to see. And, you know, you talk about a guy. There were really two guys who I think, uh, you know, emphasize, uh, uh, exemplify kind of the, the, the um, kind of core nature of this team. And I, and, and I think that's, you know, uh, Jaden Grant on the defensive side and Jack Coletto to an extent on, on both sides. You just talk about the leadership. Those were two guys that we talked to uh, in the post-game press conference that night. And, you know, Jack Coletto is just the best kind of a teammate. Jaden Grant's just the best kind of a teammate. And I look at that leadership 
uh, is definitely why the Beavers are having, you know, some success early on. And while I, before I forget, I want to point to point that out. Congrats to Jaden Grant, who was named Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, also, Brandon Kipper earns a Pac-12 Offensive Lineman of the Week. But again, to have an Oregon State player, TJ, win Defensive Player of the Week in the conference yeah. week one, that's, you know, it's, defense is definitely not an individual game. And if you ask Jaden Grant about it, he'd go, you know, it's a team game. But yeah. those individual accolades, you like to see those because it gives you a ton of confidence about your defense and then individually that you're playing well in the system, you know? Yeah, and overall, I just think it's so good that this season starts with a win. Not not with a, a frustrating Purdue loss last year. Oh, what if Chance came in after the first quarter instead of halftime? Oh, what if, you know, I don't remember every detail of that game. But, you know, little things here and there that really sort of just – kind of right. kill it going into week two, but you don't have that. Instead you have, you know, everything that was, everything that was emphasized in the off season bared fruits in week one, which is important. Right. right. And I think, you know, on top of, on top of that, just having, you know, having it be a marquee win on top of it all, like, you yeah. know, it, it wasn't, you know, you mentioned Purdue. Uh, I go back to 2019 when they lost to Oklahoma state at home in the, covid year that it was they opened with washington state did not play well as washington state uh, you know nick rolovich got one of his like eight wins as head coach that day was so, it even eight yeah uh, well, seven eight sounds about right <laughs> somewhere yeah. there but um you know go back to 2018 was ohio state uh, uh 2017 was uh colorado state uh 2016 minnesota i mean you know you can go all the way back except for weber state in 2015 so and to go back to all the way 2012, which I think was the last time you opened the year, you know, with a, a win that wasn't a Portland State type team, you know, you can't obviously apples to oranges, but that, you know, turned out to set the tone for a really big season by having, you know, a big marquee win right off the bat. So, you know, definitely a, a huge win all around for Oregon State to get the win. And, you know, I, I think more than anything, just having that, um, that confidence heading into what's going to be a, a hostile environment. We'll use that to kind of transition into the Fresno state matchup. Now uh, a hostile environment on the road this weekend, TJ, I think we're going to find out night. Like maybe we know about, I don't know, 50% of who the Beavers are right now. I think after yeah. Saturday, we're going to know 98% of who the Beavers are. And I think if they can play very similarly to how they played against Boise state, they'll be in a great position to potentially win this game. And if you can start yep. off two and Oh, uh, and then have the Montana state game, which we will presume for the sake of this argument, we'll know which way it'll go. And if you could be undefeated at a non-conference play, that, that would be something. Yep. That's pretty good. And it should be a good crowd. I think Fresno state got about 36,000 last weekend. Yeah. Four, or, yeah. Or, or, they, or they hold, or they hold 40. We, my apologies. Sorry. We know they outdrew UCLA. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be the temperatures. <laughs> the temperatures <laughs> going down. I think we we're checking. Yeah. The while we're waiting for interviews today. I think it's down to 92 on Saturday in, uh, That's better. in Fresno. Meanwhile, uh, here in Corvallis, it's going to be, uh, it has gone up to 98 on Saturday. Yeah. So honestly, I'm sure the, the Beavers might also be glad they're playing in Fresno and not playing here. Yeah, no, I might need to uh, figure out a way. At least. I said, yeah, TJ, we might need to figure out a way to uh, stay cool because we got to wait all day for that game. Yeah, uh, yeah I know. Stay inside and watch college football. I think that sounds <laughs> exactly. like a that sounds like a great exactly. option. Uh, but no, just kind of getting into the matchup itself. Uh, Oregon State and Fresno State each come into this game one and zero. Oregon State obviously with the win over fellow Mountain West uh, foe Boise State in Week One. Fresno cruises past uh, Cal Poly. Uh, I put a lot more stock into Oregon State's win than I do uh, Fresno State's win, TJ, oh, because I don't 100%. think Cal Poly is very good, um, even, you know, within the scope of the uh, Big Sky Conference. And I think, you know, the the, the I, I wrote about it a little bit today in Beaver's Edge. I think the matchup for me to most important, I'm curious to get your thoughts, is exactly the same as what it was for me last week. If you can make the opposing quarterback, especially, or in this case, Jay Kaner, as last week was Hank Falkmeyer, you make the ex the opposing experienced quarterback uncomfortable and out of rhythm, yep. you got a shot in this game. I think if they do it again, they're going to be winners in this one. So a big thing for Oregon State on the road last year is they just fall behind and they had no juice to get back in the game. And both the Colorado the and, and uh, Cal, game. Cal 
yeah, I mean, they're just behind, like, off the bat. And there's, yeah. like, a little, Oregon. Like, you know, Colorado. Throw Oregon, yeah, Throw Oregon, Oregon in there, too. too. I mean, yeah. yeah, you just, like, the last three road games, you get, you know, kind of punched in the mouth, and you're just sitting back there, like, sitting dazed. Mm. And you yeah. saw what happened right. on Saturday where they jump all over a team right in front, and, you know, then you're able to, to just kind of take your foot off the gas pedal and just right. kind of squeeze the win out. And, you know, I think that's what they're going to have to do. I mean, Fresno State didn't even play that well last week. I think the, the right. final score was 35 to 7, but they scored on their first three drives and then scored two touchdowns the rest of the game against an FCS team. Um, yeah. And it, they were, they were like pretty in sync those first three drives. But then after that, you know, they let Cal Poly into the red zone four times. I think they got mm. three separate stops on fourth down in the red zone. Mm. But the fact that Cal Poly was driving into the red zone, uh, could be a plus for Oregon State's offense, uh, something to look at. Uh, and it doesn't help that the Beavers have never won in Fresno, although it has been quite a while. Yeah. Um, 2003, in fact, yeah, 2003, 2001 were the last two times. Jonathan was a quarterback in the game back in 2001, I believe. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, TJ, is, have you uh, kind of picking up this week? Have you have you kind of heard about uh, what that game in 2001 uh was how significant it was for this program and kind of all those things. Uh, well, we had really, we had Pat Hill on our show here yeah. at a uh, twelve forty this week. Uh, yeah. I don't. Yeah, Mike, it's very... Mike was talking. Mike was talking a lot about two thousand three. I think. Well, they yeah. they mixed it up a little bit, but uh, I, yeah, you know, I'm not not the biggest Oregon State history savant, as yeah. you would know. I'm sure Brendan Brendan's a little bit better on that. No, the um, I said it's again. Like I said, all from all from studying up, man. Yours truly was five years old when that was going on. So not that I can remember, you know, myself, <laughs> but you know, uh, family members, Beaver, you know, everyone will remember that as the ambush at Fresno because Oregon State uh, coming off uh, the the best and most successful season in school history in two thousand after drubbing Notre Dame opens that next year at Fresno as you know I it was kind of um, up for debate exactly what their preseason ranking was. Some people will say it was, you know, as high as number one per Sports Illustrated. Some will say closer to 10. But either way, Oregon State, you know, went into Fresno with, you know, fresh off a Fiesta Bowl win and, you know, got drubbed. And I think ever since then, uh, it, there's definitely been, you know, some, some you know, tension between the fan bases and whatnot. Yeah. Oregon State's, they've had some games. But, yeah, I mean, the fact that Oregon State hasn't won down there uh, in history should definitely say that it's a tough place to play. They play uh, Pac-12 teams, you know, tough. You talk about the legacy Pat Hill started down there. They play anybody. Mm -hmm. They play anybody real yeah. tough down there. Yeah. So, you know. Even, believe, even Pete Strojans. Yeah. And I remember, if I'm remembering correctly from the story I did this morning, uh, Oregon State has not played Fresno since 2003. No, so, they have not. So it's been, you know, a hot minute, as they say, uh, in Oregon State. <laughs> a full generation of athletes. Right, yeah. And Oregon State um, got the win in 2000, uh, 2002 uh, back here at Reeser Stadium. So they played a couple times in a row there for a couple years. You know, let me put it this way, TJ. Do you think, um, you know, I, I think that's – if there was ever a game that Jonathan Smith maybe remembered as a player, it would It'd maybe probably be that 2001 game. Yeah. I'm probably. Probably. Like, it's like maybe one of his losses to Oregon uh, that year uh, too could certainly be in the mix, but you know, neither here nor there on that, on, on this slight rabbit hole, but you know, yeah. some, some interesting, you know, history between Oregon state and Fresno state and yeah, hopefully absolutely. the Beavers will be able to, uh, you know, exercise some of those uh, negative uh, vibes down there in Fresno and get the win. But TJ, I'm curious, what was your, what's kind of your matchup to watch as I kind of laid out why I think the, the defense uh, um, versus Jay Kaner is going to be uh, what, what, what I think is the matchup to watch? Well, different one. Again, I, I think the Oregon State offense needs to get out to a fast start again. I'm mentioning it before, right? Falling behind 14 0. I think it was 14 0 to both Colorado and Cal last year. It might have been 10 0 to one. I can't remember. But, uh, you know, Chance Nolan comes out of the gate. Uh, on Saturday, he looked good. I think he needs to do it again, do it in a road environment, a road environment of, you know, 35,000 plus on a hot day. Right. The Fresno, Fresno State, like their defense is probably fine. I, I'm not, a, yeah. I, I'm not, I haven't 
uh, I don't know. I don't watch tape. So <laughs> as you guys could probably tell by listening to me, but, I don't watch tape. <laughs> um, I think it's important that chance Nolan gets out to another hot start. I think we might see the running backs uh, get into this game a little bit more, especially with it being so hot and you, that running back room is just so deep that, you know, probably the best way to wear it out a hot and tired defense is just run it back with fresh back after fresh back. Hey, here's right. Damian Martinez. Hey, here's Deshaun Fenwick. Maybe we'll see Jam Griffin finally get into the game. I don't think we saw him at all on, no, we didn't. on no. Saturday. So, hey, here's Jam Griffin, right? Here's uh, Isaiah Newell get a carry or two. Trey Lowe here is out of the backfield on, on third down. Right. So I think that'll be pretty important. I was going to say defense, but I'm sure you're about to get into that right now because that's that's obviously the ultimate the key. You gotta gotta keep Jake Hayner down. He's one of the best. No, I think I think starting I think it's equally as important to be honest with you. You know, the fast start on offense just because, like you said, maybe you know you play well against Fresno. Maybe you allow like a touchdown and then two field goals, and you you know it's a two score game, but they've scored three times. If your offense isn't you know going stride for stride. That's I think that's the combination. So I really do think it's a dual thing where, you know, the offense is going to have to be able to move and then the defense is going to have to be able to get stops. And I think it's, mm-hmm. you know, the combination of the two. And as you mentioned, you know, uh, uh, lots of temperatures, you know, uh, it could be a little hot, but, you know, I, I don't think that'll affect Oregon State too much. I think they'll be able to rotate guys and keep guys uh, relatively fresh. Um, and, and for the most part, I think this matchup is just – it you know we we talked about it earlier. It is a an even line game. I think this is a pick yeah. game. I think if Oregon State's at home, they're probably favored in this. Given probably that it's by even like on, three three and a half four points probably. Yeah. So given that it's on the road and it's even, I think you know the betters certainly like where Oregon State uh, you know is is looking this year. Um, and yeah, I, I you know kind of getting into uh, our predictions, kind of the final piece of this podcast. Uh, Check back to beaversedge.com for the official prediction later this week. But right now, TJ, I, I feel pretty confident saying I think Oregon State's going to win this game. Uh, make sure to check back later for uh, exact uh, um, uh, points and whatnot. But right now, uh, as we sit uh, Wednesday afternoon recording this podcast, I think Oregon State's going to win this game. Yeah, I think so, too. Um, the big question I have is that we will we will see this year. We see it every year for every team, usually. What is your I'd say, what is your floor? What does your floor right. look like? Right. What is Oregon? How does Oregon State look when they play bad? Right. right. Like, so say they play bad on the road and, you know, it's their first road game, a hostile environment, a place you've never won. It's hot. Uh, yeah. You're playing a great quarterback who just drives down and scores a touchdown on your opening drive. And all of a sudden your first drive, you have a false start penalty and you're facing a second down and 15, right? Uh, right. What, what, what are they, uh, what are they at? That's a very basic explanation, but like, where are you at there? Is it, is the floor still like up? Is it up there still enough? Right. You're like still on that same level or are you okay? We might lose by two and a half, three touchdowns uh, here. I, I think Oregon state after watching last week, I yeah. think Oregon state's going to win this game. The, just for the fact that Oregon state controlled on the offensive and I don't think that's good said very often uh, around here in Corvallis and the defensive line controlled on the <laughs> defensive line. That's been a minute uh, winning, winning, yeah, winning in the trenches, winning yeah. two football games. They did it last week and they do it again down in Fresno. They're going to win. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, you're, you're, you 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 hit on so many great points and you know, that that's maybe the best of them all. I mean, you talk about defensive line play really ha- being an Achilles heel of this program for, you know, it, it, TJ, it's just kind of been my default answer so far this year, but anything impressively defensive, just refer back to 2000, 2012. Just think 2012, because yeah. bef- in my opinion, that's the last time Oregon State had a, a bona fide great defense. And, you know, no disrespect to the guys that came in in between, but the numbers are back it up. It, it, there hasn't been, you know, a, a solid defense since 2012. And I think it's kind of a cool little, you know, 10 years exactly kind of a thing Oregon State you know re- rebounds the good defense but yeah like you mentioned uh you know that to 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 play that well that early on and kind of be able to say hey the offense played well and by the way the defense as a whole not just for a quarter not for a half but really over the course of the game played pretty well uh, I, I think that just gives you a ton of confidence uh, heading into this next week 
So it'll definitely be interesting to see uh, how that all shakes out. Again, Oregon State and Fresno State coming at you on CBS Sports Network. Uh, Beaver fans, definitely make sure you get that channel. It's a little bit yeah. of a, uh, a little bit of an uh, odd one. That's the uh, the Mountain West TV package for you. So double check those uh, those, those cable guides and streaming packages. And make sure. Uh, you got that channel and make sure to stay tuned to beaversedge.com. Uh, obviously check back in Friday. TJ will have his prediction. I'll have mine. We'll also hear from uh, Dylan Calgan, Calgan Crowley, our recruiting analyst as well. And, whole bunch of other pregame content uh, in addition uh, to. So it's going to be a busy week at beaversedge.com. So make sure to stay uh, stay tuned and locked. And we'll uh, be able to provide some, some great pregame fodder ahead of this uh, Fresno State game. TJ, it's going to be an exciting one. I'm certainly uh, uh, here on Wednesday as we're recording this. Um, I'm already uh, kind of wish it was here and uh, want to see uh, how they uh, match up with the Bulldogs. But, Brendan, how do you think the, the press box would hold up when it's 98? I feel like it would be a little, little toasty in there. That's a good question. You know, uh, we're going to have to – I. I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't think a whole lot of Oregon State media are going, so we might have to check in with uh, not, our yeah, resident. Not a destination uh, road trip, really. Not, yeah, not we a might have to check in, <laughs> check in with uh, your resident, Doc Parker, and maybe see how yeah. things uh, are doing down there. Because I don't think uh, – I, I maybe a couple people, but I think it's a pretty a pretty light media road trip. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think people were lining up to go to Fresno. I don't, I don't, no. I don't really blame them either. No, no, dis- no personal yeah. disrespect to Fresno, but – I'm sure whoever lives in Fresno probably understands. Yeah, no, there, there, there are certainly uh, uh, are certainly are a lot of road trips in a given year, and not necessarily uh, one that was circled. But either way, it's going to be a tough game. Beavers got to play it, and you know, hopefully, um, the Oregon State, you know, is able to uh, play well and uh, you know be able to come out of that you know matchup winners. And you think about what's at stake, TJ. Never ever having won uh, in Fresno, it's pretty big motivation. And you know, you you think about. Um, you know, my last point kind on this, a, a whole bunch of guys uh, on Oregon State's roster who are from Southern California. And, you know, we saw how well Oregon State has played under Jonathan Smith uh, in Southern California, whether that's USC, whether that's UCLA. Pretty typically, uh, those guys go back to Southern California late in the year and uh, the results have been pretty good. So we'll see. Read into that yep. as, as you will. That should be good. Uh, looking forward to it. Future Big Ten country. <laughs> although not fresno fresno yeah. is not big 10 country yeah, it's so like, they're still know, they're still in the footprint tj's getting into conference realignment talk that's going to have to be a separate and side podcast uh, at the end of this season but no uh it's definitely going to be interesting to see how uh oregon state and fresno state shakes out again stay tuned to uh, beaversedge.com we'll have predictions injury reports and uh, the whole nine yards uh, leading up uh, to the matchup and again 730 cbs sports network you also uh, catch the game on 1240 and 1190 kex as well with uh, mike parker so tj big thanks for uh, joining me on the podcast and uh look forward to doing our podcast uh, again next week as we uh, break down the uh, the fresno game and look ahead to uh, oregon state's matchup uh, with montana state so thanks for uh, watching and slash listening this edition of the edge podcast